very Merry Christmas to all who come to worship and greet the Christ child. Our service this evening tells the story of the manger in lessons, readings, and prayers. At the service's high point, the Christ child comes to the manger where the gospel of Christ's birth is read and the Christ child is placed into the creche. Candles, colorful decorations, carols, and songs all combine to witness the beauty and awe of this holy night. I would ask uh, Jan to come forward and we'll light the Advent wreath. Jesus Christ, the Son of Mary, the Son of God, is born this night. God's Christ word has, has been made flesh among us. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them a light has shined. You, O Lord, have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His, his name, name shall, shall be, be called Wonderful Counselor, Counselor Mighty God, God Everlasting, Everlasting Father, Father Prince, Prince of, of Peace. Peace. He is also called Emmanuel, for in him God is with us. Let us pray together. Eternal God, this holy night is radiant with the brilliance of your one true light. May the light illuminate our hearts and shine in our words and deeds. May the hope, the peace, the joy, and the love represented by the birth in Bethlehem this night fill our lives and become part of all that we say and do. May we share the divine life of your Son, Jesus Christ, even as he humbled himself to share our humanity. We pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now sing the hymn, What Child Is This?
As we uh, go through our readings this evening, you'll notice that not only the words of the Gospels are read, but also the foretelling from the Old Testament. So our first reading is the story of Mary from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 35. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. And the prophecy from Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. The Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Let us sing now number 134, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
story of Joseph in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 through 21. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man, and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And the prophecy from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 2. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of its roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. To sing our hymn, the first Noel. of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men came from the east, came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? 
We have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. And Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. When they had heard the king, they went their way. And lo, the star, which they had seen in the east, went before them, till it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. The foretelling or the prophecy from Isaiah chapter 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will appear over you. Our hymn is It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of a great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. And the prophecy from Isaiah chapter 10. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, Herald of good tidings, lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem. Herald of good tidings, lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. And as we begin the section for the birth of Christ, the hymn is Angels We Have Heard on High.
chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to, to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in bands of cloth, laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the end. You please be with me in prayer. Most holy God, we thank you for this most holy night. We ask that the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. As disruptive as 2020 has been, it's helpful to remember the Christmas story begins by telling us Jesus was born in dark and unsettling times. When Quirinius was governor of Syria, the Bible says, in those days a decree went out. And this decree mandated people disrupt their lives, return to the place of their ancestral homes so that they could be assessed a huge tax increase, which was over and above the already crippling taxes that left most people on the brink of ruin. Their lives were governed by the whims of corrupt tyrants who overtaxed people in every respect. So folks may do with less, much less, the most vulnerable, especially widows, orphans, and sick people begged as passers-by in the street for enough crumbs to survive. The Gospel of Luke reminds us that Christ was born into the darkest of times, a world where anxiety, upheaval, evil, and sorrow abounded. The Christmas story does not begin on a holiday in a lighted church with blasting trumpets. It begins in a dark alley with smelly animals and displaced and scandalized family. Why scandalized? Well, most people wouldn't have bought Mary's account of how she became pregnant. When Quirinius was governor of Syria and things were horrible and humanity suffered from a sin-sick soul, God saved the day by providing the vaccine that everybody needed. Christmas. The Christmas message of peace and goodwill toward all is the world's vaccine against pernicious hatred and malice. Christmas inoculates us from the hardness of heart and callousness toward our neighbor. This vaccine promotes generosity and prevents self-centeredness and greed from destroying us from within. It purges the toxins of cynicism and despair, as well as unforgiveness and nursing grudges. That stuff is poison to our systems. Christmas gives us a booster shot and inspires us to work for liberation 
and fair treatment of all people so that one day everyone can sleep in heavenly peace. Now, you may think that this vaccine, Christmas, only works in sub-zero temperatures with snow. But there is the California and the Florida and the Hawaii kind of Christmas that works best on a warm night with palms gently waving. Christmas needs your consent to work its magic in your life. No matter the weather, you've got to roll up your sleeve and let the shot sink into your thinking, into your speaking and your actions. That's how we turn around this pandemic of suffering and inhumanity. Clinically tested for more than 2,000 years, the Christmas vaccine gets you in touch with your spiritual nature. You will see that you are the beloved of God, forgiven, loved, and blessed. Ultimately, it triggers your autoimmune system so that hope, peace, joy, and love will thrive. But as always, warning, do not take this vaccine if you are allergic to kindness or sharing. Bouts of spontaneous prayer and unspeakable joy have happened. People who want to stay small or miserable should not take this vaccine. But for the rest of us, it comes at the right moment. God is present, even in our darkest hours. Tonight we celebrate the truth that hope descends precisely at the darkest moments of our greatest need. As the carol says, the hopes and fears of all our years are met in thee tonight. So, Christmas isn't about slapping on a happy face, denying the dreadfulness of our situations. It's about trusting that this is when God comes to us. Jesus Christ came to be with us in the midst of how it is in our of how it is in our problems. Right now, as a gift to help you get through whatever it is you may be going through. So you might be asking, how is God with us? God comes to you right now in this service to give a sense of quiet peace in your spirit. God comes in the opportunity to serve and make the world a better place. God comes in the kindness of family and strangers. This year I've seen firsthand so many people put themselves out to make a difference. Our essential services workers, people making calls on the elderly, others delivering meals and contributing to help feed those who are in need. God's favorite and most common way of showing up is when people take the time to look out for others. Remember, at Christmas, God came not with overwhelming might and a Rambo-esque take no prisoners machismo. God came in the form of a vulnerable baby born of impoverished parents who would immediately become refugees seeking asylum to escape Herod's wrath. I've been thinking a lot these days about the Christmas movie Home Alone. In the Home Alone movie, the eight-year-old Kevin's wish to be left alone from his family was inadvertently fulfilled 
the family accidentally left him on a trip as they went off to Paris. For a while, he had a great time doing whatever he wanted. You know, kind of like how the first couple of weeks of COVID, some of us welcomed the respite and indulged in new things while we were quarantining. In the movie, Kevin gets bored with no one to share life with and wishes for his family to come back. Which, spoiler alert, they finally do. In the separation, he learns to value and appreciate his family more fully. Even his annoying brother, Buzz. May it all be for us this year. May it be the same. Giving us a deeper appreciation for our loved ones and their roles in our lives. Even the annoying ones. When we can't be with them this year. You know, I've been thinking that we all have our own emotional houses to protect. This year, any number of assailants came knocking on the doors seeking to do us harm. COVID, isolation, economic downturn, political and racial divisiveness and grief. But we can defend our turf through faith and protect what really matters by living the way of love and hope and service that Jesus taught us to live. It's the ultimate booby trap that makes evil fall flat on its face. Through faith and by following the way Jesus taught, the things that would rob us of our joy, our sense of purpose will fall flat on its face, and we will rise with hope. Tonight we remember that Jesus promised to be with us always, even till the end of time. Amen. As always, as the offering time comes around, we know that we can't receive it right here and now, but we do ask that you send in your offerings, and if there are offerings for the Veterans of the Cross, for pastors like me that weren't full-time and didn't get all of the benefits, it might be nice for you to send those in to the church, please. The morning offering or the evening offering will be received.
myself. <laughs> of the supreme gift that you gave us in a manger at Bethlehem. Humbly we offer our gifts of service and possessions in joyful thanksgiving for the love you have shown us. Accept these gifts for the sake of your Son who was born to us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now this year we actually we cannot do the distribution of light because there's only just a few of us here. So if you would, get yourself a candle and light it. Maybe dim your room lights a bit, and we'll go into the lesson of the light and the singing of Silent Night. The lesson of the light comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us and we have seen his glory the glory as of the Father's only Son full of grace and truth. Let us sing together, Silent Night.
pray together. Almighty God, you have made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to lighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. From God's house to your house, Merry Christmas.